What is going on guys? Welcome to the Citizen Developer Channel. My name is Griffin Lickfeld and today we are going to be talking about the Microsoft certification, the AI 900. If you have questions revolving, what is this certification? How do I study? What are some topics that are going to be on that? Make sure you stay to the end of the video because we're going to answer all those right now. Roll the intro. With more and more conversations happening around AI, generative AI, conversational AI, the AI 900 certification has been growing popularity, especially within the Dynamics community. So what is it? The Microsoft Azure AI Fundamentals Certification, the AI 900, is gonna cover a range of topics underneath the Azure umbrella of Azure services relating to machine learning and other AI concepts. This certification is for technical and non-technical developers like myself. We're gonna introduce some of these concepts later in the video at a real high overview. So if you're looking for more of a study guide, make sure you watch out for the next video coming next where it's gonna be a much more deep dive into these different topics to help you study. Like other Microsoft exams, you need a passing score of 700. I'm not gonna explain how the scoring is done, but if you do have questions, make sure you check out the link in the description down below. That's the resource provided by Microsoft and how they score their exams. You will have 65 minutes to complete the exam and you should get around 30 to 35 questions. Microsoft might say the range is a little bit wider than that, like 25 to 40, but I think I personally got 33 questions on my roll. So you can kind of plan for about two minutes a question. Lastly, the exam currently costs 99 USD. So compared to other Microsoft exams, this one is gonna be fairly reasonable. So I'm gonna challenge each and every one of you to go out there and get it. So how do I study for this exam? I need to be honest, tell you a secret. This exam is not technical. And because of that, in my opinion, it's not super challenging if you prepare the right way. This exam is not gonna cover things like, tell me the details of how ChatGBT works. The reality is this exam is gonna ask you things like, which general principle applies here or which Azure service should you use? And I think you can use effective tools to learn that and be successful on exam day. Specifically, the best tool I'm gonna to recommend is the Microsoft Learning Modules. These are gonna be found on the certification webpage where if you scroll down to the bottom, these are gonna be guided articles created by Microsoft that are gonna show you and lead you through everything the exam is gonna cover. What's really important is at the end of each one of these little sections, you're gonna get a knowledge check. Make sure you do the knowledge checks. These are great practice problems and make sure you review your answers in this box here. When you do that, you're gonna be able to see why you got your answer right or why you got it wrong. This is gonna be valuable so you can understand the why behind the answer you're selecting. Another resource is gonna be the instructor-led section. I haven't personally used these, but these seem to be different courses that are either live or recorded where a user can watch them and learn. I have no doubt these are great resources, but like I said, I just haven't used them. Then the most valuable resource that I personally have had while studying is going to be practice questions. I cannot stress the importance of practice questions. And if anybody that has taken a Microsoft certification knows the exam tends to have some tricky problems and the AI 900 is not left out with that. Make sure you get some practice problems in. There's plenty of different resources online that have practice problems relating to these topics. Some are free, some cost money. I'm not going to recommend a specific one, but I will say you need to do practice problems. The more problems you do, the more familiar you're gonna get, the more confident you're gonna be on test day, and the more successful you're gonna be. So what is actually on the exam? There's two main topics I wanna to cover today, and this is by no means extensive. So again, make sure you check out the next video. But the two topics we wanna to cover is the AI principles and the AI workloads. The AI principles are gonna involve these overarching general ideas that Microsoft is using and applying towards their, their approach of AI. These principles are gonna include fairness, reliability and safety, privacy and security, inclusiveness, transparency, and responsibility. A lot of these principles are gonna mean exactly what they sound like. The only ones that for me were tricky were the differences between fairness and inclusiveness. So I wanna break it down for you really briefly. Fairness, if the question is gonna be relating to bias of an output or bias of testing or validation data, that is gonna be fairness. If you see the word bias, it equals fairness. 
if the AI were to generate maybe a sexist response based off of the data or it would lean towards a certain income level, that is going to be fairness because the outputs of that are not fair. Inclusiveness is going to involve making sure everybody has the ability to access and use the AI capability. Regardless of income or disability, they would have the ability to utilize this. So a good example is say a user who needs to use the AI capability is blind, then the AI capability would should be able to speak the output aloud as opposed to transcribe it. That would be an example of AI being inclusive. The other topic is going to be the AI workloads. AI workloads are going to be the different services that Azure AI provides and each workload is going to have a sort of sub workload. So it's going to be really important to make sure you understand the difference between all these because you're going to get questions over which workload or sub workload do you need to use here to accomplish this. The first workload is going to be machine learning and this is going to be broken up into regression, classification or clustering. Regression, think of it as taking past numerical data to predict a future. So an example I always reference is the stock market. You're taking past numerical data and you're trying to create a prediction of what is going to happen or what the output would be. The next one is going to be classification. Now, if you see any questions regarding an option set, a Boolean, a pass or fail, this is going to be classification. Classifications are going to have labels specifically for the inputs to be classified or labeled to one of those. So a good example is taking all this input data of students and classifying them as passing or failing the class. The last subsection of machine learning is going to be clustering. Clustering is going to group the data into different segments, but this is going to be tricky with classification. So clustering does not have specific labels. It doesn't say, hey, this is the pass group and this is the fail group. All it's saying is this group's inputs are similar. This group's inputs are similar. So it's going to group the data, but it's not going to classify them. It's really important to understand the difference between those. Anomaly detection is our next workload, and this is going to sound fairly straightforward. This is exactly what happens when you your credit card were to get swiped out of the country and you get a text message from your bank. That's anomaly detection. Another workload is going to be computer vision. This is going to be your things like looking at a specific image and telling you the color, the resolution, the location of objects in the picture, the number of objects in the picture, a description of the picture. These are all going to fall under the computer vision. Note though, there is something different than computer vision and that is custom vision. I'm not going to say computer vision is out of the box, but it is some preset capabilities in the computer vision AI where custom vision has similar capabilities, but you have to provide your own training data. Fourthly, we have natural language processing. Natural language processing is going to handle things like your language detection, your language translation, your text analysis for things like the customer sentiment. It's also going to handle your speech analysis, which is going to take your speech to text for things like captions or and it's also going to handle speech synthesis, which is text to speech. The last AI workload is going to be knowledge mining. Knowledge mining is used to extract information from large volumes of often unstructured data to create a searchable knowledge store. Now, I personally didn't have any questions involving knowledge mining on my practice problems or on my exam but it's still important and valuable to know what that is. Thank you guys for sticking to the end of the video. I know we covered a lot about the AI 900, but if you have any questions, make sure you put them down in the comment section down below. As well, if you passed, I wanna hear what you did. I wanna hear what were some things that you found tricky, what you did to study, and what you did to learn. Again, my name is Griffin Lickfelt. Guys, thank you for being here. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I challenge each and every one of you to go out there and get it. Make yourself valuable in the dynamic space. See you in the next one.